David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another video. Today I have for you the final video in my series of top 10 lists. And for this list, we have the big kahunas. It is the top tier, the grail pens. So that would be the top 10 pens over $500. Uh, this was another very difficult list to compile. There is a fair amount of difference between this list and my last grail list a few years back. And just because a pen is expensive doesn't automatically make it good. Uh, there are many pens in lower tier lists that would have made my overall top 10. So in order to see which pens made my list for my favorite over $500, please join me over here at camera two. Okay, here we go, the big kahunas. Uh, I do have a number of honorable mentions. There was a number that were very painful to leave off the list. And that first on the list is the Danny Trio Tamanuri on Shu on Genkai. Uh, this is a pen that has long been on my top 10 grail pens and top 10 pens uh, in my collection. So you know it's going to be a decent list if I had to leave this one off. Uh, this is a massive pen. This is probably the largest pen in my collection. Um, and it's just beautiful. This Akatamanuri finish, it barely even fits in the frame. Um, it is a huge pen. Um, this is a Japanese uh, eyedropper filler, uh, and the nib is probably my favorite nib stamping on any nib I own. I just think that is really, really glorious. Um, I also like Danny Trio's Fireball nib. I think that looks cool. If I ever own another Danny Trio or purchase another Danny Trio, I think I need to get one with a Fireball nib just because I think that looks really, really cool as well. But I absolutely adore this pen, love it every time I use it, uh, and it was very painful painful to leave off this list. Next up, we have a pen from Aurora. Uh, they've come out with a number of these pens over the last couple of years, and that is their Black Mamba series, uh, or their Mamba series. Uh, this is the Black Mamba, and then they've come out with a few different colors, a blue and a red. Um, I just think that this looks amazing. Uh, and it's uh, Aurora makes some very nice nibs as well. Uh, and uh, this is just overall a really nice pen. Plus, I, you know, I purchased this pen right about the time when Kobe Bryant passed away. I was a big Lakers fan, and so that it kind of has some uh, memories associated to it as well of the Black Mamba himself. Next up is a pen from Visconti, which won't be the last Visconti you see on this list, which is the Homo sapiens. Uh, this is a classic model, uh, and I really love this version of it. This is the sterling silver model, uh, which actually has the uh, bands on the cap as well, which they don't do any longer. So I just kind of like how this one is unique as well. Um, the material has a really nice warmth to it. It is the kind of a, a lava resin in a uh, combination, uh, so that it's you know how many pens are made out of uh, volcanic lava, uh, and so that it's unique. I love the shape. I love the feel. Uh, this Visconti nib that I have on here is outstanding. And, and I, like I mentioned before, I like that it's unique in that it's a little bit different than the ones that are out right now. Next up on the honorable mentions is the classic Mont Blanc 149. Um, this is their flagship model. I really love the size of this pen. Um, I just, this is a perfect size pen for me. I really like the girthiness of it. Uh, you can see there are ink windows here. There's no ink in it right now. Uh, I'm trying to do better about keeping my pens clean when I'm not using them. Uh, this is just a classic timeless pen. Uh, and this is just a really good size and the Mont Blanc nibs perform outstanding as well. A couple more to go. Next up is a pen from Conid, and this is their bulk filler king size. Uh, if you're not familiar with Conid, uh, it is a uh, company based in Germany. And uh, something that is very nice is that they recently started uh, production again. Uh, they shut down for quite some time during the COVID period, and they have started back up again. So people are uh, very much looking forward to new Conid bottles coming in. It has a very unique bulk filler system. Uh, and I just really love the looks of this pen as well. It's just really, really well made. Also, it's really hard to see, but um, I got them to engrave the underside of the clip and with this clear cap, you could see it on there. So I thought that was a nice touch as well. Uh, it's just a really well machined pen that performs outstanding. It's one of the, the wettest and juiciest writers in my collection. 
Two more honorable mentions. Next up, we have the Pelican M1000. I think the Pelican M1000 has a nice, classic, almost vintage look in a modern pen. I love the size. Uh, you'll see that as a theme in most of these pens in uh, my top list, is I, I do care for larger pens. I really like the M1000 nib. Uh, I will say they don't perform equal to their letter size, meaning that this is a fine, but it writes more like a broad or double broad. Uh, so I will say if you pick up an M1000, be very careful about the nib size that you get because uh, uh, they are significantly different in the way they write from then, in, let's say, a fine on many, many other pens. Next, we have a pen from a company that is actually going to be making a comeback here in the very near future, and that is Delta, and this pen is the Delta Dolce Vita Oversize. Um, I really love the classic look of this pen. This black with orange is something that Delta did a lot. There's a couple of different versions of this pen. Uh, one is lesser expensive and has uh, an engraved cap band. This one is sterling silver and is stamped. Um, this is an extremely girthy section. This is a very girthy pen. It's not overly long, just very girthy. And the uh, nib on here is outstanding. Uh, it's one of the favorites in my collection. And like everything else here on this honorable mention list was very painful to leave off. Next up is a pen from Leonardo and that would be the Momento Zero Grande. Uh, now you might, if you saw my previous list, say that, wait a second, you included this in your 250 to 500 list. Yes, I did. But this one is one with a gold nib and those usually go in the, uh, in the 700 range. And so I thought that it was appropriate to include at least that version on this particular list. Um, I really love the size of these pens. The nibs are outstanding. I like the sections. Uh, this one here, the primary four, uh, primary manipulation four is uh, Jonathan Brooks, uh, very very famous material. This is available in a number of different colors. A couple here from Limited Pens Korea uh, that just were really, really nice looking. And then there was even this one special model here. I like this size so much. Uh, this is uh, the one that I had made in the Carolina Midnight and offered in a limited edition. This was a limited edition of um, how many pens? It was 15 pens that I ended up. We had some extra material from one of my previous projects and I decided to make kind of a tricked out version of this Carolina Midnight pen uh, and thought that they turned out really, really well. So the, uh, the Memento Zero Grande is one of my favorite pens and who knows, one of these days we might do another project with Leonardo of a pen of this size as well. Next up on this list is a pen I purchased this year that I just love. It is the Mr. Cypress Eggshell 09. Um, they make a number of different eggshell patterns. This one is called 09. They have different numbers. Uh, I just really think that this eggshell patterning looks beautiful. I really like how it just diminishes here towards the end. While I really like the cap, I think that it looks a little bit better with it diminishing than if it was just solid throughout. I also like how here on the section they have some Raiden Flex that are on the section as well. Um, I upgraded to the gold nib on here just so the pen would be that much more special. Um, it's a really nice writer and just the artisanship and the uh, time that it went in to create this is mind boggling. I just think it looks beautiful and is very worth checking out. Next up is a pen from Nakaya that is one of my personal favorites. Obviously, it's a personal favorite if it's on this list. Uh, that is the Dorsal Fin 2. Um, I own a couple of Nakaya pens, uh, and uh, of the two, this is my absolute favorite. Um, I just think that the unique fins here just add an extra element that is just really, really cool. Now, uh, there was actually been some controversy or at least some thinking about it's been told that this is uh, actual Arushi that has been built up over time and they build this up. And then there was some other folks that felt that maybe it was formed underneath or it was wood underneath or ebonite underneath. Uh, and then it's just a light layer of Arushi. But um, I've actually had some people extra ray this pen, not this specific pen, but theirs, and it can be clearly shown that this is actual Arushi that has been built up. So they're telling the truth, which is nice. 
Um, I really love this pen. I also like how the fin, when you're writing, faces straight up. Um, this uh, Nakaya just makes some very, very special pens, and this is definitely one of them. This is the Dorsal Fin 2. Uh, there is a Dorsal Fin 1, and on that pen, it just has a Dorsal Fin on the cap and not on the barrel. Uh, and this one is the 2, so, meaning there is 2. But I just love this Akatamanuri finish, especially the transitions here, I just think are gorgeous. Coming in at number seven is a pen that for the longest time I said was my grail pen and I never thought I would actually purchase it and that is the Mont Blanc Hitchcock. Um, it was just more pricey than I wanted to uh, ever spend on a pen and then just by chance I had almost kind of given up on the idea of purchasing one and by chance um, I had a friend who purchased one who was going through a uh, uh, an Asian dealership uh, an authorized retailer who had uh, versions of this pen or had models that they had uh, maybe one more and it was a price that I couldn't pass up it was basically this is the least amount of money you're ever going to spend on this pen and if I don't buy this now I'm never going to get one and so while it's one of the most expensive pens I have ever purchased, I feel it is worthwhile. Um, I just really love the uh, Mont Blanc themed pens. They do a really good job with their great character pens in incorporating uh, aspects of that character's life. Uh, there is the knife from Hitchcock. There is wording from uh, a film canister. There is little notch marks that are um, basically uh, notching each of Hitchcock's films. Um, the resin here, when you twist it, just has an optical illusion, which is uh, calling back to the opening credit sequence of the movie Vertigo. Um, there's just so much that I like about this pen. Uh, I'm a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock. I'm a movie buff. And so this plays into a lot of my um, interests. And also I like his famous silhouette there on the nib. Next up, I have one of my favorite pilots in my collection. Uh, at first, I was considering the 845, which just has one of the most spectacular nibs in my collection. Uh, it's I think it was very high on my favorite nibs list. It's just outstanding. But what I decided on was the Pilot Custom Arushi. Um, it is, you know, it says it's Arushi, and yes, it is. If you look very closely, you could see the paint marks on there. Um, you know, it does have like a black look to it, so it's not... Uh, like some of the Akatama Nuri finishes or things like that. Now it does come in a vermilion as well, but I just really love the size of this pen. It just feels amazing in the hand. Uh, and this large pilot uh, uh, nib is just outstanding as well. It's really glorious to write with. Um, it's just truly one of those pens that really feels substantive in the hand. Uh, and you can see why it is pretty much the king of their custom lineup. Coming in at number five is another pen I really consider to be a grail pen for me, and that is the Omos My Lord Arco. Um, I really wanted to own a Arco celluloid pen, and Omos was no longer in business. Uh, and I really thought that these were sharp looking pens, and I looked and searched for a long time. Uh, as opposed to the the, uh, the the Hitchcock, the Mont Blanc, uh, where that pen kind of fell into my lap, so to speak. I really wasn't searching for it. Uh, this one I was searching for. I really wanted a pen that was reasonably priced, that I was willing to pay the price for, uh, because there was some Arco out there that is just extraordinarily expensive. It looks fantastic, but it can be very pricey. Uh, and I finally found one that was actually a used pen that... Um, uh, that, that I could tolerate the price for. Um, there's also, if you check out the review of this pen I have, uh, there was actually uh, some issues that I had with the pen itself that I actually had to get repaired uh, that um, I was very thankful uh, about uh, a company to be able to help me out and repair this pen. Some uh, old Omas technicians that used to work for the company helped me out and I really greatly appreciate it because they turned this pen from something that basically I couldn't use anymore back into one of my favorites in my collection. Um, I just think that this Arco Celluloid is amazing and the way it hits the light and has different looks to it. Um, this is a very wet and juicy nib, which is very nice as well. Um, I always like the imprint of the Omos nib. Uh, and overall, this is just one of my favorite pens in my collection. Next up is my favorite Visconti in my collection, and that would be the Blue Ripple. Um, I just think that this 
is an amazing look to it. It is meant to signify when a uh, like a rock or a stone gets dropped into a pond. And I just believe that it looks amazing. This one here is a very dark blue. I don't know if how hard that is to see here in the light. Um, it also comes in black but it is just amazing. It has one of the older Visconti gold nibs, uh, which writes outstanding. And I just think that the overall look, even though this is a metal section, it is not slick at all. Um, it just has a very cool look to it. Uh, and but the combination of very cool looks and outstanding performance make it my favorite Visconti in my collection. Next, coming in at number three, I was considering this Namiki Yukari Royale, which is fairly new to my collection. Um, it's something I really, really enjoy, but I decided on the bigger brother, which is the Namiki Emperor. Uh, this is truly a glorious pen. Um, it is comically large. Um, and that you can get some looks if you are writing with it. Um, I have. I've written a bunch of letters with it on planes before, and uh, and people look at you like you're, uh, you know, drawing with a clown pen or something like that. But it is glorious to use. One of the most amazing things is this enormous nib. And what's amazing about it is this huge nib writes, and this is a medium nib, writes just like a normal medium nib. It doesn't light, write like something that is extraordinarily clunky or, uh, or, or hard to deal with. Um, it's just glorious to use. It's one of those pens that as soon as you start writing with it, you're like, wow, this is amazing. I can understand what all the deal is about this pen and why it's so fantastic. Um, I love the Arushi finish to it. Um, I just like the overall classic looks. Uh, and then writing with this pen is just a joy whenever I use it. Down to the final two. And next on the list is a pen from Sailor, and that is the Sailor King of Pen. Um, I have this one here, which is the Royal Tangerine that I considered. Um, I have this one here, which is an ebonite version, uh, which is just a classic look to it. And I really have always loved this particular pen. But the one that made the list is the King of Pen Pro Gear Sky. So it's a little bit of a different model, but I just absolutely love this pen. First of all, it's a limited edition. I like that it's unique, it's sold out. You're not gonna see them everywhere. Um, also, I love the size of this pen. It's a really nice size to it. Um, you could use it very nicely posted or unposted. Um, also, this was something that has a lot of sentimental value to me. Um, this was something that I purchased at the uh, uh, Fountain Pen Hospital in New York, uh, literally probably you know hour and a half before I did my interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right before the uh, uh, interview, I went down to the Fountain Pen Hospital because I wanted to check something out. Um, I thought these were sold out. I didn't think they were in, uh, available any longer. And then lo and behold, within their uh, uh, within their showroom in the display case they had one and it was a medium nib that I wanted so I took that as an indication that it was something I need to purchase I haven't regretted it it's my favorite sailor in my collection and I absolutely love it next up is the number one pen on my list and that would be the classic pens LB5 now this pen is based on the Sailor King of Pen model, but it is slightly larger. Maybe it's hard to tell, but it's just slightly larger than a Sailor King of Pen. Um, but the it does have the Sailor King of Pen nib, which is my favorite, one of my favorite nibs in my collection. Um, I really love the size of this pen. It did come in a number of different colors, like five or six different colors, and each there was only fifty uh, made. Uh, there was all of the other colors only had one version. This blue had two. There was one blue with gold, and then this blue with the uh, the uh, silver um, trim. Um, you can really well. It has a a diffusion bonded acrylic. You know what, let me show my other one. This is the brown version that I have. Uh, this blue one is called the Tensui, and this is the Koseki in the brown. And with this brown, you can really see the layers of this acrylic. And that it's basically stacked vertically as opposed to horizontally. Um, and it has a lot of strength to it. To the fact, to the point where there were some machines that uh, didn't like working on the, this material because it was a little harder to work with. 
Um, I love the fact that it's a limited edition. There are not many around. Um, like I said, there was only 50 of each color. Um, there are some delusional people up on eBay. There's one person trying to sell one of these. I think it's one of these blue ones. I can't remember. Maybe it's a brown. I don't know. Someone has one up there for $12,000. Uh, they're not going to get $12,000 for this pen, but it is uh, an indication that this is extremely desirable. Um, if you could get your hands on one for a reasonable price, then I don't feel that you will regret it. But it's honestly, between both of these are my two of my favorite pens in my uh, collection and kind of worthy to be called a grail pen and something that I very, very much enjoy. Okay, so there was a list at my favorite pens of over $500. Um, I hope you had some nice eye candy and as well as some ideas of some pens that you might want to pick up in the near future. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.